Welcome to the story of the Element Girl Tin from Family 14, also known as the Carbon Family, with atomic number 50. One Friday evening, Mom and I decided to make a simple pasta dish with tomato sauce and veggies. We didn't have any fresh tomatoes, but there was a large can of crushed tomatoes in the pantry, along with basil and zucchini from our backyard and my parents and I enjoyed the meal with toasted garlic bread. As I was cleaning up, I rinsed the tomato can to recycle it. Suddenly, I called out to my family, holding up the can. When you look at this can, what element comes to your mind? Without lifting his eyes from his phone, Dad replied, Tin. I immediately texted my friends to see who wanted to visit Tin and ask questions. Exo and Isaac responded enthusiastically. We met in Exo's backyard after breakfast on Saturday morning. We set up the periodic table on the fence. With much anticipation, we pressed the element symbol for tin, SN. The backyard and the rest of the world spun around us as we laughed happily. Soon, we found ourselves standing in front of a large building with a grand entrance. The sign read, Dolby Theatre. Exo exclaimed, this is where they give out the Academy Awards. I always watch the award ceremony. Pointing to the street sign, I added, look, we are right on Hollywood Boulevard. Then I wondered aloud, why did the periodic table bring us here to meet Tin? Wouldn't a can manufacturing plant or a food canning factory make more sense? As we stood hesitantly on the street, a girl arrived in a limousine in front of the theater. Exo muttered, she must be a movie star. The girl stepped out of the limousine and we looked at her wide-eyed. She wore a shiny silvery outfit with a copper-colored belt and shoes. Her accessories included a bell necklace, long dangling earrings, and a shiny glove on her right hand. Draped carelessly around her shoulders was a long pinkish purplish scarf and she carried a metal can as a purse with a metallic chain strap. Ringing the bell that hung like a pendant on her necklace, she said, Hello, welcome to the Dolby Theater. I am Tin. Isaac said, Nice to meet you, but why this location? Tin laughed and replied, Let's go inside and I will answer all your questions. We walked into a lounge area with a beautiful large glass window. Tin pointed to a statuette on a table. We all exclaimed, that is the Oscar statue. Exo added, but this one does not have a gold covering. And why is it mounted on a can? Tin smiled and explained, did you know that before 2016, the Oscar statues were made of Britannia metal, which is mostly tin with small amounts of copper and antimony. After 2016, the statues are primarily copper with small amounts of tin and trace amounts of other metals, all coated in 24 karat gold. I added the can for a unique touch. As she spoke, her bell pendant softly chimed. Exo asked, that tiny bell has such a beautiful ring to it. Is it made of tin? Ringing the bell, tin replied, it is actually made of bell metal, a copper and tin alloy. This type of bronze has a high tin content, which helps the ringing tone last longer, important for a bell. Speaking of bronze, you've probably heard about the Bronze Age, from 3300 BCE to 1200 BCE. Isaac raised his hand and said, yes, that was when bronze tools and weapons replaced those made of stone. Tin nodded, correct. My belt and parts of my shoes are made of bronze. Tin is quite an ancient metal, used as far back as the Mesopotamian civilization. I was fascinated by the intricate design on her long earrings. Your earrings have a pattern carved into them. Is it symbolic of anything? I asked. Rattling her earrings, Tin said, Yes, the pattern is the ancient alchemical symbol for tin. Alchemists associated tin with Jupiter. Interestingly, just as Jupiter was considered the preserver in ancient times, tin is a kind of preserver in modern times. 
Exo exclaimed, that brings us to the tin can. Tin tapped her shoulder bag, which was actually a chain attached to a metal can and said, the history of food preservation and canning is quite fascinating. In 1795, Napoleon's French government offered a large prize for anyone who could figure out how to preserve food safely for the military. A French confectioner experimented and discovered a technique for preserving food in glass jars. However, glass is fragile. So a British merchant developed a method of preserving food in iron cans coated with a layer of tin. Unlike iron, tin does not rust when it comes into contact with water. Today, in addition to tin plate cans, which are steel cans coated with tin, we also have aluminum cans. Looking at us, she swirled around in her crinkling outfit and added, My outfit is made of tin foil, but the foil that people use these days to wrap food is actually aluminum foil, not tin. Tin paused and walked over to the large glass window. She said, I mentioned glass when we talked about cans. Large glass windows like these are made using the Pilkington float glass process. In this method, hot molten glass is poured onto a bath of molten tin. One side of the glass touches the tin bath, while the other side is heated, creating a wrinkle-free glass surface. The glass leaves the tin bath at a much lower temperature, is further cooled and then cut to the required measurements. So there you go, another application of tin. We all cheered enthusiastically. Then holding the Oscar statuette, tin began to dance near the window. As she danced, she made some peculiar screeching or crackling sounds that startled us. However, she seemed cheerful throughout. After a few minutes, she concluded her dance and carefully placed the statuette back on the table. Curious, I asked, why did you make those unusual crackling sounds while you were dancing? Tin burst into laughter and replied, that is called the tin cry. When I twist, the crystal structures within me break and produce those sounds. All of us exclaimed, wow. Tin smiled and then took out a toothbrush and toothpaste from her tin purse. She pointed to one of the ingredients listed in the toothpaste and asked us to read it aloud. We all read, Stannis fluoride. Then I said, Stannum is a Latin name for tin. That's why your symbol is SN. So Stannis fluoride is a compound of tin and fluorine. Tin replied, excellent. Fluoride is important to prevent tooth decay. And there are different types of fluoride that get added to toothpaste. In addition to preventing cavities, Stannis fluoride is antimicrobial and also lessens the supersensitivity of teeth. Stannis fluoride can also be referred to as tin 2 fluoride. The sunlight streamed into the room, casting a warm glow as tin removed her long winding scarf and gently placed it on the table. Its vibrant colors caught my eye and I remarked on its beauty noting it seemed like a true work of art. Tin nodded in agreement and explained, when fabrics are dyed, a mordant is used to help the dye bond strongly with the fabric. One such mordant is stannous chloride, also known as tin 2 chloride, SNCl2, which enhances and brings out these gorgeous colors you see. Exo asked, why is there a Roman numeral for a tin compound? Tin replied, Tin has a variable charge since it forms 2 plus and 4 plus cations. The 2 plus ion tin compound is commonly called a stannous ion and the 4 plus ion tin compound is called a stannic ion. Tin 4 oxide which is SNO2 or stannic oxide is a compound where tin has a 4 plus charge. This compound is widely used in the electronics, glass and chemical industries. Isaac asked, isn't tin in solder? Also, your glove seems to be conducting electricity. Is it something special? Tin answered, yes. Solder is an alloy of tin and lead used in joining pipes and electrical circuits. As for my glove, it's made of stannine, a material composed of a single layer of tin atoms, 
that conducts electricity exceptionally well. Styrene is used in the electronics industry, particularly for developing energy efficient electronic devices. Impressed, all of us applauded. Tin smiled and announced that she needed to wrap up our meeting to make it to her next appointment. Before parting ways, she handed each of us a tin of chocolate cookies. We thanked her profusely, waving enthusiastically as she was whisked away by a waiting limousine. Within seconds, we found ourselves magically back in Exo's backyard, munching on the delicious cookies Tin had given us. Later back home, I took my dog Electron for a walk, reflecting on what a splendid adventure it had been. There you have it, the story of Tin, from the Magical Periodic Table and the Eleven Gold Series, Book 6, Family 14, The Carbon Family. Happy learning. Thank you.